Today we're popping the lid on this 7700K which I de-lidded and applied liquid metal to about 9 months ago. Now for those who are new to the channel, this 7700K has really been put through its paces over those months as it was the main CPU that I was using for gaming and editing up until about 2 weeks ago when I upgraded. So this chip has definitely seen some extensive workloads and a few of you guys have been asking me to do a follow up video on the processor to see if there's any damage or degradation to the CPU die contact area after it's had liquid metal on it for so long. Essentially we're testing the longevity aspect of using liquid metal as a thermal compound and whether or not it requires any follow up maintenance such as replacing the liquid metal over time. Now the main benefit from deleting your processor and replacing the stock thermal compound that's already in there, commonly referred to as toothpaste, is that it's pretty common to see temperature drops of about 20 degrees celsius under full load. This can allow you to run a cooler and quieter system or squeeze a little bit more out of that processor in terms of overclocking. There are some drawbacks though, you'll need a deleting tool like this one, some liquid metal, a high temperature adhesive, and some cleaning tools as well. And the last thing that you want to be doing when you've just bought a fresh $300 processor like this one is just throwing more money at it. The other significant drawback is that you will definitely be voiding your warranty by delitting. So if your CPU dies down the road or if you manage to destroy the CPU in the process of delitting, you can kiss your hard earned money down the drain. So today is just a little bit of a checkup on this CPU to see if there's any fading or degradation to the dies contact area. So let's take a look. All right, now it's time to pop the lid off this guy and see how we're doing underneath. So as you guys can see, we've got the 7700K here. We've got the D-Lid tool underneath. And we've also got some cleaning wipes here as well. So I'm just gonna pop this guy in. Doesn't matter which way. He's nice, he's in there, he's secure. So 7700K is secure and the D-Lid tool. And the way that this works is that the CPU is secured in there nice and tight. Uh, there's a little lip in there that secures the PCB and then this part here just pushes the IHS off and since we're using a glue that I've put on there uh, since this has been deleted already it shouldn't be too hard to uh, get the IHS off again so let's uh, tighten that up a bit shouldn't be too bad should loosen up and I can already hear that IHS has come off already because of that glue. It's not too tight. So you can already see that the IHS has slid off. Alrighty, so. Yep, that has come off. So what we're gonna do is pop that guy out. So here we go. Just bring that guy closer. And here we go, you guys are seeing it first, just as I am. And looks like we won't know until we start wiping some of that cleaning product or some of the liquid metal rather off. And you can just see that the liquid metal has spilled over onto those contacts here. That's not what you want. And that's a bit of an indication that I've uh, applied too much liquid metal uh, to begin with. So just a heads up for you guys who are doing this, just apply a little bit less than what I have here. You only need like a little pin head and then you can spread it from there. So. Luckily that didn't happen beforehand, but should be good now to clean it off. But everything looks fine. It doesn't look like there's any uh, you know, degradation or fading away at the, um, the CPU die here. So I'm just gonna wipe away here. See what we get. Yep. Looks like we're getting the same surface as uh, you know what what was originally there. Nothing too crazy, but let me do a little bit of cleaning and then we'll have a look at it again. And the uh, bottom side of the IHS looks fine too. It is a little bit darker. You can see that little dark spot in the middle. So I'm going to clean that and see how that looks underneath as well. So just in the center there, it's a little bit darker, but you know, not the um, you know the horror stories that you see in the uh, YouTube comments of it drying up and you know you need to replace it every three months. Definitely uh, none of that happening, and um, that's indicated by the temperatures were, were fine as well before I uh, before we delittered it again. But you can see you can see that is a little bit darker. I'm sure the um, chemistry nerds in the comment will uh, comment section will let me know what's going on there because 
I am not sure what's going on there. It's a little bit darker, so. Honestly, guys, I think this looks pretty good. You let me know what you think. I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning. All right, so I've cleaned off um, pretty much as much as I can off the uh, CPU die there. And as you guys can see, um, it's pretty much what we saw with the GPU, uh, the GTX 1070, if you haven't watched that. Um, I did a little bit of a similar video where I pulled the, um, the heat sink off after three months after applying liquid metal and uh, we're pretty much seeing the same thing. Just the surface finish um, is a little bit faded, but you know, it's not what people, uh, you know, it's not what I read in the comments, you know. The comment section, some, some people are saying, you know, it seeps into the, uh, the CPU die uh, contact area itself. Um, it's not safe and um, that's you know, it's not what we're seeing here. I've had this on for 10 months now and uh, it's more than safe. As you can see, there's it's just a little bit of, I don't even know what to call that, but uh, I'm sure uh, some of the chemists in the comment section will let me know what's going on in at the uh, atomic level because at the surface, uh, it looks pretty good to me. Same thing with the bottom of the IHS as well. Looks pretty good, still smooth. Uh, you know, it's not rough and there's not chunks that have been, um, you know, come off and eaten away from the liquid metal. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you guys think of this. All right, so as you guys saw, I was extremely lucky because that little spot of liquid metal did not touch the uh, contacts that you see here on the PCB. Um, they were just touching the first one. Um, and I'm very, very, very lucky that it didn't spill over and uh, short the other ones because if that happened, um, I can't say for sure what would have happened, but um, I don't think it would have been very nice. And I don't think this CPU would still be alive. So guys, please learn from my mistakes. You only need to apply a pinhead amount of liquid metal onto the CPU die contact area and then spread from there. It should spread nice and flat and uh, won't uh, sp spill out onto those contacts. However, if you do want to take a bit of precaution and uh, if you are a little bit more paranoid, something that I'm going to do now is just apply a little bit of insulation to those uh, contacts. So the same glue that you'd use to around uh, sort of seal the IHS around the side here, you're just going to put that onto those contact areas here. So I'm going to do that and show you what it looks like. Uh, and then we're going to refit the IHS with some liquid metal as well. So there we go, that was pretty quick. Just a little drop of glue to insulate those contacts. So that way, if there's any spillage from the liquid metal, you're not going to uh, short those contacts because those, those of you who don't know, the liquid metal that you put on here is electrically conductive. Um, and again, I'm a complete idiot for putting way too much liquid metal on the first time. Um, so yeah, learn from my mistakes and you should be good. And if you want to take an extra precaution, just do this and you should be good to go. All right, now it's time to reapply the thermal compound to the CPU die contact area. And to, today we're going to try something different. You guys have been uh, recommending this to me. You guys say it's um, as good as the stock thermal compound that's on there. Um, you know, these, these CPUs pretty much come stock with this stuff apparently. Um, but I think we'll stay on the safe side. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think we'll just stick with liquid metal uh, this time around. So as I said before, we're just going to apply a pinhead amount uh, and go from there. So this is Thermal Grizzly's Conductinaut, highly recommended. Um, I've used Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra before, but I do prefer this stuff. It is a little bit easier to spread. And um, some of the experts in the comments do recommend this over the Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra as well. So let's go ahead and apply that and we'll uh, see how we go. So that's really all you need. Uh, again, learn from my mistakes. I applied way more than this the first time, so again, that's probably even a little bit too much. Um, if it is, we'll wipe it off, but let's uh, start spreading it out with this tool here that they give you. And that spread it pretty nicely there, as you can see. A um, little bit more on the generous side than probably what you'd want, but uh, looks pretty good. Try and get a good angle here. Let me just, oh, there we go. So there, not too much. And now time to reseal. So as we saw, both the CPU die contact area and the bottom side of the IHS were in pretty good condition. There was a little bit of fading on both surfaces, but definitely nothing too major. And for over nine months of daily usage, I'd say you guys are pretty much safe to delete once and then pretty much forget about it. From the results, there's no evidence that we need to swap out the liquid metal every few months or anything like that. So when anyone tells you that you need to do that, feel free to show them this video. 
And also a huge takeaway from this video is not to apply too much liquid metal in the first place. I was extremely lucky that nothing went wrong with this chip as I don't think things would have went too well if those contacts had shorted. So learn from me and take those precautions that I showed you. That's all from me guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as well. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.